Welcome back. We're doing stairs now. Uh, two kinds of stairs we have to worry about are the stairs that go sideways and up and the ones that come towards you. And in order to do that, first we need to uh, talk about the anatomy of a step. So the part that you step on is called your tread and then the riser goes up. That's the part that steps up. That's the part you stub your toe on when you're walking upstairs. So the riser and the tread. Now if I connect these, um, if I've drawn my steps properly, um, then these will connect. So let's say I've done that properly and all the valleys. So these little piece right there, I call it the valley. The dog has found something interesting. And this one is a peak. So the valley is underneath and the peak is up top. So if I've done this properly, I should be able to put a straight edge on there. And you can see that I've done this properly on the bottom side. Sure, they all line up and I know where to start my next one. But if I line up the, the peaks there, you'll notice that they don't line up properly. And it gets a lot squishier here and the steps will increasingly get larger. So these should run parallel to each other in real life normally. And they should be just as high here. So this should have happened right here and then gone here and then should have happened there. So these are the diagonals that will not go to a vanishing point, but they will go parallel and give you a guideline for your peaks and your valleys between your risers and your treads. So with that in mind, it becomes a little easier to work with. So we need to start with a guideline, an angle of our stairs. And if we're on a wall that is an X-plane, as in it's facing you directly, that means we're not gonna have any perspective. So basically, uh, I can start from here and do all the valleys. If I wanted to step to rise here and get about that high, I know that I want a guideline that goes here somewhere, and the bottom of it for the valleys would go here. If I want the step to come in first and then up, then obviously my valleys have to start maybe in here somewhere, and the peaks will start right there. So I'm gonna choose to make just longer steps than normal, um, not steep, so this is more of a ladder and this will be more of a walkway in a garden. Eventually you get to just, you know, an angle like this would be just uh, patio stones, uh, that kind of, they're a slow step. You don't, you don't get high very quickly. So this one right here, I'm just gonna say, I want this to end right about there. And so there's my guideline for the bottom right there. And I'll move this over just a bit. So guideline number one, and if I want my step to go from this corner up to, let's say here, for the sake of this, I'm gonna to wanna to run that parallel. So I'm gonna look at this and you can go ahead and measure it if you like to and give yourself another guideline. Don't let them lean, as in get away from each other. I want that to be the same distance back here as it is up here. So there's my guideline right there. Now my first step's already done, my first riser. And because I'm working on an X-plane, everything is vertical and horizontal. I'm pretending that I've ripped stairs away from here and I gotta rebuild them. So the paint job that would be left over in here should look like there's an up here and then it would have come across. And I just wanna make sure I'm running horizontal there. Once I do that, then I can go up and I can check this line in the wall and make sure I match that. And then I can go horizontal and I can start referencing these lines up here just to make sure that I'm staying as horizontal as I possibly can. Because once the noise of these guidelines gets in there, it's hard to stay horizontal and vertical. So take your time and you'll find you're more successful and reference the side of your paper and so on. Okay, so once I move up here, you go ahead and do the same thing. And welcome back. I've drawn in all these stairs right here and you'll notice that this last step would go up to here. It just didn't work out for me that it landed right at the top. So it's just up here a little bit in the difference. So that's okay. Now the other problem is my vanishing point is right here. That's how high it is. Which means at this level, when you're drawing this, somewhere around there, I'm gonna see all the treads. So I, I'm standing over here on the left, which means I can see the front face of the risers coming away from the vanishing point. And I'll see the tread because I'm taller than them. After this point, I will not see them because they're above me. I can't see on top of the step. So I certainly won't see these ones that are up there. 
Okay, so let's say I wanted to draw that one just as a little lip over top. So maybe this becomes not a ceiling, but the end of a wall, and maybe this is a patio up top. Um, it's up to you. So what I'm gonna do, I'll start off, I'll just go to each peak and valley, and I'll go from the vanishing point, and I'll start drawing a line to represent where that's gonna go. The next one will be from the peak, and then you can fast forward from here and just see where this gets. So right here, you can see what the problem is. I go to this peak, and it follows the same level. It might do that in yours at some point in time if you go above your vanishing point. So that becomes right where the horizon line is. Then these ones start gradually going upward, which means that's fine for that one, but that means the next one, the valley is actually dropping down a spec. So you see that? So there's a difference there. So if I go to this next one, it becomes even more pronounced where I can see the front of this. But this one, I have to come down to that point. Oops, that's my straight edge. And then I go right here, right? And then this last one. So it's almost like we have x-ray vision. I drew them in anyways, okay? And then this one would happen in here. I've gone ahead and extended some of these lines. And what would I actually see? So here we go, I've got the front of this step, I would see this, I'd come across, and I would see these lines going in the distance as well. So I'd see the front face. Obviously the guideline I'm gonna leave so that Mr. Fogarty can mark me, and but it's gonna be lighter. And these lines I can continue. So I would see this, comes across until it hits that guideline comes up until it hits that guideline. Okay? So no problems there. And then once I get to this one, this line will actually just continue right here. So welcome back. Uh, this would be visible, and this would come across. I would not see the diagonal that drops down here, or actually, yeah, the diagonal that drops down here at this corner. Then I would see the top of this one, and only this upper line would I see coming from the vanishing point. Just like it's more exaggerated up here, I would only see this one. I know this exists back here, and I know, for example, this one exists up here, and I know how far to go because I've got the guideline telling me so. So this one here is so close. It comes across somewhere, and we'll show how to end those steps here soon. But I just wanted to show you what I can actually see in real life here. Okay. Um, this line back here is going to disappear because that's the back wall, unless these steps are individual steps that are somehow floating and the tread is missing, uh, or the tread's on top, but the riser is hollow somehow. At this point, I want to end the steps. So I could... At the very least, I could say what well, I decide how far those go, and I could just end those steps wherever the heck I think I want to with a, with a vertical that goes here, just like this riser comes across and would be a vertical right in here. So I can make that, that's no problem. I just have to work hard to make sure I'm not leaning over or anything like that. So there's my riser, there's my tread, and if I've done this correctly, if I, if I do this really carefully, if I've done it correctly, if I was a robot, a computer, then this would exactly match and be the same as these guidelines over here. They would run parallel because in my system, I'm not creating any sort of perspective. So the peaks for this one has no perspective, this guideline for the peaks and the guideline for the valley, there's no perspective in that. They just run on this X plane. So maybe I can line them up underneath in the letters here. That's kind of a nice thing about having something to see through is, okay, it happens to be right there. So I can line up, I can make myself a guideline that goes right along here. And I can move along, so I'll move that over just a bit. And then I can move along and create. So let me do that in marker. 
So once I have that nailed down nicely, I can go, there's where my real line is gonna go. Okay, and here's, so there's the riser. Okay, and then this one comes across and it's gonna meet there somewhere. So if I make sure that that's horizontal, then I know that that's gonna go like that. And my other guideline is gonna run parallel to the other one. Uh, now look how messed, I, so look how much I messed that up. This needs to run parallel in order to make it the same as this side. So I should have really drawn that one first because I know where it starts here. So mistake number 504 for Mr. Fogarty. So this will meet right there. Now that's, that's supposed to be my horizontal line. So I'm gonna have to find a way to fix that. I must have leaned it over a bit. And then I can go up until it meets this one. So this is the riser in this case. So it goes over and it meets right at that intersection. And that should be vertical. And then this goes to the next intersection. And then this goes to the next intersection. Okay, so just like the first step, I've got all these lines uh, as if I ripped the stairs off of the wall and I keep on going. So this one's not quite there. Okay, actually, I kind of went in ahead of that, didn't I? So working in marker is a little more difficult because you've got to you gotta make sure you don't mess stuff up. You only have one chance, not very forgiving. Okay, uh, and I can't see what happens, but since these lines are here, then I can start dropping, this will come across and hit the other one. By the time this one rises up, it'll hit the other one. Now you can't, you can't see it there, uh, right in here. And when these are separate, so that'll help you draw the end of the stairs. The easiest way to finish stairs, which I'm not saying you should do, is you just put a wall there. So if that represented a wall right here in front, then you just see, you show the system, but you don't have to draw the end of the stairs. I would like to see you end some of the stairs at least. Okay, so then I can create the bottom of this like that. All right, if I get rid of my old wall back here, then this starts to make a little bit more sense. I don't wanna get rid of my guidelines. Uh, you wanna show that to me so I can mark it. Uh, but you can clarify some of this stuff and make sure that those go back to the vanishing point. So I know they do because I went there before. Okay, so you can see that opaque front panel. If you wish to, you could give these a thickness and create another guideline and say, I want these steps to be kind of like floating steps. And they could be that wide, let's say. And somehow they're coming out of the wall like they used to do in the castles. So what if that was the case and this didn't exist at all? So you could cast a shadow underneath that, right? Uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's like that. So there could be a shadow underneath and this could just be floating. And you would see still this back wall. You would see this instead of the floor down here, the way I've drawn it, you would see that continue underneath. So if the next one was this thick, then you could go from the vanishing point again. Oh, get on the vanishing point there, Fogarty. And, oops. So pencil is nice because you can make lots of mistakes. This will go out past there, and there's the next one. So you could have this continue, and there could be a shadow that drops underneath there on that wall. Kind of like that. Right? In fact, you can darken up the whole thing so that whole step is put that whole thing in darkness if we wanted to. If the next and the next one was gonna happen there. Okay, so we could create some floating steps that way. So in the end it would look something like this. All right, and you can start to see them float, which is kind of fun. Okay. 
okay? So now you got these floating steps. You'd have to find a way to get rid of these lines. So drawing in pencil again would allow you to create those illusions a little bit better. So that's it. That's the, the stairs that are going sideways on an X plane. And uh, you can you can go back in. Once you get what you want, you can go back in and you can, I like working on a gray ground, a darker ground than just white because I can work back in with whites. But these treads, if they were light, by the time they get up here, are so thin, I can barely even get this, you know, 0.8 in there. You know, maybe there's a little bit of a, a ledge there. Okay? And you could have, you know, we could have this. This whole floor could be light, if that's the case. And I could create a shadow across here if I wanted to on the floor. As if the light was coming from over here. And maybe it cuts off each step like that. I'm just imagining here for now. Okay, so next step will be the steps that come towards us.